Alright, welcome back. So it's been over a year since I've last done a build video for Kabrakken, so I figured I'd go ahead and do a refresher and hopefully talk about things I didn't mention previously. So, it's been requested to talk about abilities and the level in which you should order them for these build videos, so I wanted to cover that real quickly here. Now for Kabrakken, I personally like to cap out his one uh, first, and the reason why is because it is his main initiation tool to get in and also get out if you need to. And it's also great, especially if you don't plan to in, uh, buy blink or you plan to buy it later on it's just your main uh, gap uh, closing ability and it's it's really useful a lot of people like to just overlook to how valuable the movement speed actually is especially if the enemies like to backpedal when fighting and you can just chase them down so quickly with your one uh, now this is just not for jungling or anything because I know some people can uh, jungle with Kabrakken or solo lane this is more for more casual game modes I would say uh, next, uh, your 2 versus your 3, they have two different functions and that's all personal preference. Your 2 is going to provide you with more protections per stack, which can be very useful uh, for being tanky, obviously, as well as increase the stun duration. But more importantly, uh, this is really great for the high burst damage that the Kabraka is kind of uh, just known for, right? He's somewhat uh, referred to as Fat Loki as he could do a tons of burst damage. Your 3 is great for leveling if you can get a lot of uh, multiple targets all in one area and things like that it just does a lot of aoe damage um not sure how it compares to your two as far as clearing minions i don't really do any conquest or any serious thing jungling things like that so i wouldn't know that uh, so that's it for abilities now let's go into actually building kabraken now with kabraken there are a couple of ways you could build kabraken now personally me when i go to play a garden more than likely i'm choosing to be the support and there's no other support or initiating gods around me so therefore i personally like to go into obviously the cooldown boots uh, into the sovereignty and the hardwood again this is very ideal if you're fighting against a well-balanced team if they have more magicals than physical then you probably want to go into hardwood first if it's just more balanced or they have more physical than magical then again you probably just want to go into sovereignty now for certain game modes specifically like clash and arena and also um and also assault i would skip the boots and i would just go into sovereignty first i go into sovereignty first again if it's more physical sided if not if it's more magical i go into heart ward uh, again for assault is the same thing so typically it'll look like something like this this will be kind of traditional uh for those three different modes this way how i build my support uh, like a bracken uh, but let's just kind of leave it and just kind of take all these things out. Now the other starter way to go into Gabracken is more dedicated to be a little bit more of a bruiser, uh, right? Because you have another support, uh, you have an actual person dedicated to supporting, or you have another initiator. So we just want to be playing out a bruiser. Uh, Gabracken is definitely common to go to the CDR boots. Straight into the Breastplate of Valor, uh, reason being it has mana to complement the full CDR that you are investing in, and also has tons of physical protection, a good old warning, uh, so, and it's also really low cost, so after you get these two items, you definitely lack a lot of HP, uh, so that is why you see the Ethereal Staff picked up after your best play. This is very common to see in Bruiser Guardians that look to either just solo lane or jungle or whatever the case is. If they're looking to do damage, this is pretty typical. And as well as at this point, you don't have any magical protections. Uh, so you definitely will see the voice tone pretty commonly picked up right after Ethereal Staff. Again, this is pretty common for any Bruiser Guardian. The last couple of items it just kind of varies upon on your certain situation like if you have uh, a lot of physical gods or a lot of ADCs or whatever other team that are giving you a really hard time it's just all situational you probably go to Midgardian uh, at that point you have tons of physical but then you're lacking a lot of magical again you can just go into whatever you need if it's assault uh, you probably want to pick up Stone of Gaia of course if they have magical gods um, you can go into the Borg of Hope uh, it's it's pretty a hefty investment but the cool thing about it is it provides a lot of HP and and what a lot of HP does uh, with the Ethereal Staff is give you even more uh, magical power, as you see by the, by the passive there. So you can do something like that. Um, again, if you have these couple items uh, item slots open, you can also just go into the Hallward and Sovereignty at this point. Uh, that's it's kind of late, but at that later the stages you are doing a little bit more team fights, so you can get use out of this. Uh, again, you probably want to be careful, and these do not stack with other sovereignties and hard words on the team, so they do not stack. So just be aware of that. If you want to invest and go into even more damage, uh, you could probably go into Plyonomicon. 
The way this works is you activate an ability and your next basic attack it does a portion of your magical power as additional damage. This is what it kind of looks like. So I'll pop my one and I swing. As you see it does three different types of damage. It does your normal basic attack damage. It does your ability damage which is you know his one and then a prox the Pinomicon. So you have three different damages all in one attack as you can see a little bit better there. So that's how Polio works with that. Um, in this specific build, maybe not the best because you have a little low of magical power and it is a percentage of your magical power so you could probably invest into something crazy like uh, a Slow Reaver. If you go into something like this, this is this is when it gets really crazy. This is when you start doing four uh, types of damage all in one ability. Yeah, it looks something really crazy like that. <laughs> so you can kind of mess around with that. Uh, back to the more supportish way for Kabraken that's more, more commonly that the way I build would be into the, you know, Sovereignty Heart Ward. I, I always pick up Ethereal Staff. I feel Ethereal Staff is one of the core items for Kabraken, no matter if you're looking to do damage, or if you're looking to be a bruiser, or you're looking to be a pure uh, support. And the reason why is because uh, typically the Void Stone works really well with Kabraken because you're always, 100% of the time, majority of the time, you are going to be near your enemies and you're going to stay around them for quite a while using your 3 or whatever. Uh, so you can get a lot of good use out of the Void Stone. But the bad thing about Void Stone, as you can see, it has no HP. As well as I talked about earlier about the great use of the Breastfeed of Valor, uh, as it does lower the cooldown of your 1 from 18 seconds all the way to 10.8 when you have full CDR, Breastplate has 0 HP. So with two items having 0 HP, you're lagging in the HP department, and that's where Ethereal Staff comes in. Uh, and yes, you can replace this with Gem of Isolation, it is going to lower your HP by quite a bit, but with the, with the Gem of Isolation, it is super annoying to play against. Uh, and the reason why is it procs really well with your three, your trimmers. So if you capture multiple people, it's going to proc that every single time you do damage. And it's like, what, once every half a second like that? So they're going to have a really, really hard time getting out of your three if you have Gem of Isolation. Uh, so that is how that works out. And that's the reason why you also see Ethereal Staff is because you probably want to get into Breastplate and Void Stone, which has no HP. Uh, so that pretty much covers everything. Um, again, if you, you probably don't want to wait till last item for best plate because you want to get more use out of the cooldown reduction, so you probably get that early on. Again, it just really varies on you know whatever you're fighting. Another item that you could pick up is the mystical mail. The problem I have with mystical mail, and the reason why I never personally pick it up, is because it's very expensive, and as well as the aura can really fall off in the mid to late game when everybody else starts leveling up and they have more magical defense that 40 magical damage per second is going to really really lower down but again early to mid game it can really stack up your damage with your three um, now active vice i talked about blink earlier you can go into this if you're looking just to uh you can have a couple ways you can charge up your one and then blink or you can blink and then charge up your one and hit them uh, but typically i probably want to charge up first blink and then, you know, just do, do something like that. Or, you know, you can always blink and then ulti. The problem with the blink into ulti, the Kabrakan ultimate takes a little bit to actually launch. As you can see there, so in a very tense situation where they're just on the edge, that one second or half a second delay when it actually drops down, they can actually get away from it. So it doesn't stun them. So you can probably just blink and then use your wand to stun them. And that can definitely guarantee you that they're going to be locked into your ultimate and they can buy the block, do whatever. So blink is really good. Um, you can go into sprint. Um, Though it doesn't make too much sense because you're already slow and rude immune with your wand. But the idea with sprint, I would imagine, is probably just sprint first. Kind of get a good distance on a, on your target and then use your wand. And then you're just you're just Olympic sprinting <laughs> for, for a very, very uh, long distance. So that's how, if you want to do that, you can go into sprint. Um, otherwise, yeah, other actives are just very situational. You can go into shield underworld. Or shell. Uh, the reason for any any of these two actives is because, as we all know, when you use your three, you are a sitting target, so you're open free for uh, a kraken or anything. Uh, so you can actually cast a shield of underworld while you're doing your three. So you probably want to hopefully have quick reflexes. So if you see that kraken coming, right click to cancel and then hit G or whatever your hotkey is, and then you can reflect the damage or you can do this uh, preemptively. So you can pop shell first and then use your three if you can pre uh, predict the Kraken. So 
hopefully uh, that covers a lot of information. There's a lot to talk about there. Hopefully it wasn't too long of a video. So hopefully that helps you out when you're playing Kabrakan or you're just new to Smite and want to help understand Kabrakan. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.